How are you doing, Rafara? I'm alright, Farai. It's been a it's been a while. Yeah, it has been. It has been. But then with you, it's a bit weird because I talk to you like quite often. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost it's almost a bit awkward to interview you because I feel like you heard you know that. Yeah, I know a lot about what's going on. Yeah. It, because the way we talk as well is like we talk in a very I don't want to say intimate because yo, <laughs> we're talking in a very like personal manner, right? Like we share these updates, sure, like yo, yeah. I'm working on this and this, and you're working on this, and we ask each other like these deep questions. So I, I feel like I know a lot of your journey, mm -hmm. but I also feel like um, it would be interesting to have you because, like you said, uh, I haven't really seen you in almost six, seven months. Yeah, uh, you've been on an interesting new journey. Um, and I guess maybe let's let's start there, and then we'll come back to some of the aspects. Uh, so right now you're a you're a developer, right? Yes. Uh, uh, working for Human Made. Yeah, Human Made. So it's an international company. Yeah. I work in the EME region, so that's essentially Europe, Middle East, and Africa people. Okay. Um, there's also people in America, Asia, and Australia. But yeah, so totally new concept where you might talk to someone in America, uh, yeah. wait for the response or something. <laughs> Whereas before it was like, okay, I'm working in Zim, local. We all wake up yeah. relatively same time, at the same time. time. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's, so that's actually a thing that I didn't think of is the time zones. How, how does that work uh, when you're working in teams that are like spread across the globe? So generally, so it's an agency. Yeah. So, you know, we work with different clients, different projects. And you try to have people in the same time zone working together. So I've worked with Asia people, um, and the difference wasn't that big, but I've never done America because that's like a total yeah. shift. Yeah, I think like maybe like Zimbabwe. six, eight hours behind us yeah. or something like that. Something like very odd. So it'll be way, way too much. Um, but yeah. generally you're working with people in similar time zones. So you wake up one or two hours, um, plus or minus the same yeah. time. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. It's not as, as crazy as the moment you said Asia, I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's sticky. But um, you, so what is human made? Uh, because I remember when you told me this and I was like, wow, this is like a big deal. <laughs> yes. Uh, big deal. Um, so human made is a web development agency yeah. uh, specializing in WordPress and um, WordPress at enterprise level. So, you know, you're dealing with high traffic websites. Yeah. So, for example, TechCrunch, you know, um, we built the, the last TechCrunch website. I think it's the one that's currently live, dated to July 2022, <laughs> yeah, before someone yeah, comes for someone me. Someone comes for you in 2024 uh, and they're like, fake news. <laughs> yeah, so when you, when you hear TechCrunch, you're like, oh, that's big, you know, it's a big yeah, news is, outlet. Um, and, you know, this happened before I joined. Um, and I remember way back then, when the new website came out, I think it was, uh, let me not say a date, otherwise <laughs> I'll be quoted. I'm like, you lied. Uh, but yeah, when it came out a couple of years ago, I was like, this is interesting because, you know, it's WordPress yeah. and people normally have this view of WordPress, which is sort of negative. Like, okay. Um, it's Templates. Exactly. Templates, easy to do. <laughs> a five-year-old can do it. Yeah. But then you look at the TechCrunch website and you're like, oh, this is WordPress? Like, they're doing this, they've yeah, customized yeah. it, and when you, you know, go behind the scenes and you're really analyzing, like a developer, you're like, okay, they've separated things, they've used this technology here, and this, this, this. And like, yeah. Fascinating. I was reading your blog, <laughs> and it says, when you're around 16, 17, I think just after O-Level, you decided to build a, a, a startup with a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Let's, let's talk about that a bit. Uh, what were you guys trying to do? And what were like, some of the outcomes? So the big thing in my head was, oh, flip, Mark Zuckerberg did it. You know, he yeah. built Facebook, <laughs> he made billions of dollars. Why can't I do the same thing, you know? Yeah. And um, I had a real itch for development, you know, yeah. like what you're saying, all levels around the time where you have to decide, you know, are you going to start A level? What are you going to do in A level? Is it, you know, uh, MPC, Mass Physics, Chemistry, because you want to be a doctor, which or... at some point is what I wanted to do. You know, I was like yeah. growing up, you know, went to the same primary school yeah. and, you know, you were always asked that question, what do you want to do when you grow do? up? And my answer was, I want to be a heart surgeon. Why? Well, 
I would be one upping my dad because <laughs> back then it was, you know, just a general doctor, you know, yeah, general yeah. practitioner. I was like, I yeah. want to be a heart surgeon. I'm specializing. Yeah. And then all of her came, did that. And then I'm like, I really don't want to be, you know, a doctor anymore, a heart surgeon. I want to yeah. do this computer stuff. And then I was like, ah, doing computer studies, A level, it's really just going to take too much time. I yeah. want to start coding now, right? And really, the way I can explain it is like burning sensation. Like, you cannot control yourself. You're literally like, I want to do this <laughs> now. And yeah. no one's going to tell me otherwise. Yeah. So then we're like, okay, cool. Uh, let me focus on the question. No, no, it's, it, it, it's really part of it, isn't uh, it? It's really part of it. <laughs> yeah, so, so then we're like, all right, let's build this, this, this thing, right? And back then it was a photo editing app. Yeah. Um, and essentially it would read um, people's emotions and then it would edit the picture based on the emotions. So we're integrating to Microsoft API. They had this like emotion API and I was reading, I think a couple of days ago that they've discontinued it or yeah. something like that. So plug into this API, you feed it the picture data and then it analyzes, it tells you, was okay. Was this AI? Uh, I'd like to think so. Okay, yeah, because that sounds, it sounds very complex. Yeah, so it's, they take your face and then yeah. they look, okay, I don't know the math behind it, <laughs> but the complex math and yeah. yeah, don't believe them when people tell you you have to know math to be a developer. It's not that deep. It's really not that deep. So they they take your picture and they analyze it, you know, like the different points, you know, and then they're like, okay, yeah. you you have a smile here. Okay, you don't. You, you're going more down. You're frowning. How are your eyes? All of those things that we as humans see and we comprehend. Okay, Farah is smiling Farah is right happy. now. Or Farah is sad. Yeah. So they did that, right? And then it gives you the response back. Okay, happiness is 70%. Sadness is 10%. Um, yeah. something in between is 5%, whatever. And then based on that, we then had our own logic to say, okay, if we got it <laughs> to be more happy, we're going to take a red color, you know, an orange more color. More saturation, it. Filter. Yeah. happy filter. Happy filter, Happy filter, essentially. <laughs> and then bam, you know, it yeah. edited. And I remember when I got it to work, so it was an Android app, built yeah. using Java. I do not want to go back to Java. <laughs> No offense to people who program in Java. You know, these things are personal. Preference offense to the, them. The end of the day. <laughs> so I remember when we got it working, I was so excited. I was like, yes, you know, it's working. This is amazing. You know, I remember taking a picture of myself and then it did, you know, like the difference when I would be smiling, it used the correct filter we wanted. And yeah. when I would be sad, it used the correct filter, right? And then, uh, yeah, posted on Instagram, uh, you know, my two followers liked. Um, you won't find it there now. <laughs> uh, it's archived. Yeah, but, I don't remember seeing that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that, that was an interesting, um, an interesting one. So the problem, I think, was business model. Um, I think when you, yeah. where I am now and the path that I've taken and the experiences I've had, when I then look back and I'm like, would this have actually worked? And then you look at it, as you're a like, business, ah, yeah. you can easily a, see. Yeah, some as a holes. business, you're like, I don't think this would have, yeah. you know, really worked. It's a normal thing. Yeah, the but. plan probably was okay, maybe we're going to sell, you know, higher quality filters or something or find, you know, a subscription model if someone wants to use this. Yeah. But what's really the use case? Would yeah. someone yeah. rather do that, pay you, you know, to have your app analyze and put a filter? Or they can just open, what was the big photo editing app back then? I think Instagram was pretty, uh, in terms of filters. Yeah, in terms of filters. I feel yeah. like, Android. there was something else that was uh, not... Wasn't it PixArt? Yes. Is it PixArt? Yeah, one of those, right? Yeah. Like, would someone not just open that app, you know, edit themselves? It's free, really so. not complicated. And there were a lot of those apps that were really free. Doing that, yeah. right? Uh, so was this the thinking back then? Or was this the reason why you guys, like, moved on from that or... Because, I mean, that would be, like, a really mature thing no, to be at 16. No, so looking back, <laughs> that these are my thoughts, yeah, right? Yeah. But then at that time, it was like, we can do this, right? But then it was just a fallout that happened with okay, the guy who was working with. co-founders, yeah, essentially. Yeah, between co-founders. So the big plan was, okay, this app is our stepping stone. We're going to start getting money from this app, and we're going to use that money to yeah. put back into the business. And the end goal was to have a tech company. So, yeah. you know, you're doing software development, you're working with different companies, 
it's no longer focused on mm. the yeah, app. Yeah. But the app was like, this is the quickest way to we raise thought money. to raise money, to get yeah. money into the business. Um, but yeah, things didn't just work out because, yeah. you know. You guys were really like in peak Silicon Valley, right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> to you be know, fair, it's, to be yeah. fair, I think, I think all of us were because at the, around that time as well, I was also thinking about getting into development. So, yeah. It really was like a blueprint that if you were like exposed to the internet, you really did want to say to hell with school, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go code, I'm going to, you know. It, yeah, so. It, it was simple in, in, in your head. Yeah, and, and that's, <laughs> that's a very important thing to highlight, you know, access to the internet. So all of yeah. this happened 2014, 15, yeah, somewhere there. Yeah, yeah. And access to the internet was much better than let's say, people in the 2000s or something like that, yeah. right? Of course, we had Africom, you know, it would take its time, you know, yeah, learning well, those stuff like that. Really have anything, did they? So, <laughs> so that's what I used back then. But I don't think I would be where I am if the internet was not as good as it is. Because I'm trying to imagine, respect to those people who had to, you know, commute to a library to or no, to no, somewhere to yeah. get that access to the internet, to study, to get to learn about this thing, hey, I was at home sitting in my bed and I just just turn on this router thing and do what I it wanted. It was much easier. You know, to, it was much, much, much world. easier. Here and there, I would go, there used to be a cafe by, by Newland's shops, I would go yeah. there and, you know, spend some time. Um, but really, it was not like a day-to-day -day thing, which is also another thing, you know, I was fortunate enough to have internet at home, yeah. you know. So it's like a lot of factors when you then a lot go, of variables you know, coming into play. Played into part for <laughs> me to be to become a developer, right? To become a developer. So this is so you're falling out, no more startup. Um, what I do know is you still didn't go to A level. Uh, yeah. or uh, tertiary. I mean in fact, it, if we're like describing it in, in the terms that people love, people would call you like a dropout. Right? Yeah. Uh, in in that uh, in that conversation. Which <sighs> I have like issues with that term, but so it has negative connotations yeah. to it. You know, <laughs> dropout um, is associated with failure. You know, it's like yeah. oh yeah, you dropped out, oh flip, you don't have a degree, oh may, what's going on, Philip? And and waiting. also it's also a F school kind yeah. of mentality, and and I always it's a hard conversation to have, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, you know me, you know. <laughs> I was pretty good at this academic stuff, you know. Exactly. So exactly. it's like it was pretty sensational. <laughs> it was that shock thing to to people to be like, wait, this is the guy who's designing it. <laughs> of it's all like, people. Exactly. Now that you say it, it's actually really shocking because it's like uh, this is not like a party hard kind of guy. No. This is not a rebellious kind of guy. So it's not a guy who fits uh, yeah. the model of what a of what a drop out is yeah. right what was the reaction to that <laughs> uh, i really have an understanding dad yeah um he still wanted me to go to school you know he still yeah. wanted he was like well, if you want to do computers do you know uh computer studies with maths and physics or something you know and then you can then do computer science after that yeah. right uh but then i was still like no i don't want to do that and then you know, maybe I can then start to see some, you know, elements of rebelliousness in me because yeah. we then tried, you know, like tech focused schools. Yeah. So there was McMain um, by Herbert Chitepo, I think it's still yeah. there. Um, went there for, for a bit. Um, also went to Trust Academy. Yeah, I had, remember when I came to Tech Zen, yeah. I think you were doing something with Trust. Yeah, I was just now before doing that, I don't know. Trust remember. Academy, yeah. Um, and I, I think Trust Academy was really me trying to figure out Am I willing to go through, yeah. you know, I don't want to say the pain, but am I willing to dedicate my time and effort to this, you know, formal education thing? Yeah. Mainly really for the purpose of getting uh, the credentials. Certification. Yeah, getting the credentials. Because while I was taking that, I had already, you know, done all of the stuff that they were doing. Yeah. You know, uh, so Trust Academy was really my choice to be like, okay, I want to go back and I want to see if it's really that important to me or yeah. not. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is after work, because I was doing both. Yeah. I would work, finish at five, and get then, into town, and then go there, and then finish maybe seven, somewhere there, and then depending on, you know, where my dad is, either he'll pick me up along his oh. way home, or, <laughs> public, or, you transport, know, public transport, go back home. 
and imagine doing that throughout Every the week day. repeatedly. Yeah. It really then tests you to like, is this really is this that important yeah. or not? And I then decided, nah, yeah. right now it's not. And that's also another thing people need to remember that like you can always go back. No yeah. one stops you. I think yeah. we focus too much on what people think. Yeah. People will be like, yeah. ah, Flip, you know, I'm, you know, this age, I'm 30 or and whatever. I can I really go back that. to use it and stuff? It's like, it's your life. If yeah. that's what you want to do, do. And, and I think it's, it's, it's hard. I won't like compare it with anywhere else, but I will say like in Zim, we, we really do place like a, a ton of importance um, yeah. in, in that stuff, right? And I'd actually love to ask you, for you, for, because for me, it, 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 it became a thing where it's like, these are the choices I'm making for better or for worse. Like, I understand that there's stuff I'm leaving on mm. the table. Uh, I could suffer for it down the line, mm. but it is a choice I've made. Was it like that for you or? Yes. So I knew I was taking that risk because, you know, we in Zimbabwe. Yeah. You know, how many people, which is also why I really love, you know, um, what you're doing, you know, you're getting people to share their stories. Yeah. Because I was going to say, how many people do we know who took this path, you know, yeah. who dropped out, you know, started to take, you know, um, career. And, and did sell cocaine. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and did sell As cocaine and stuff, right? <laughs> so, because there are not so many stories that we hear like that. We hear more yeah. of the stories of the doctors, the lawyers, yeah. you know, it's like, <clears throat> will I really make it? You know, I didn't know. And it was like, eh, I'm okay with it. You know, yeah. It, it, as terrifying as it is. Yeah, and I think I was also okay to be humble enough to go back and be like, hey, I I'm failed. sorry. You know, Let's... let me then try your yeah. path if it's still yeah. possible, right? Um, so I always had that at the back of my mind, like, this is an option. So... It's <clears throat> interesting. I've, I've never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. then coming, coming back to the story, so the startup failed... And then uh, probably, let's just say there's now early 2016, somewhere there. And then I'm like, Flip, what do I do? You know, I have... <laughs> the grand plan yeah. of falling apart. <laughs> and the other thing was like, okay, my dad is probably wondering what's happening with this kid, you know. Like, yeah, you have to show something. Yes, you, at the end of the day, you have <laughs> for, to show for something. For all you're dropping out and you're heroic. <laughs> exactly, you know. You have to show something. So I then started thinking about that. I'm like, okay, I need to do something to at least validate both to myself and to my dad that this still is viable somehow. <laughs> and I gave yeah. myself a mission. I'm going to get a job before I turn 19, yeah. right? While I was still 18. And this was linked to another, you know, story. So my uncle, my, my mom's brother, yeah. started working when I was 18. I was like, ah, I want to be, you know, like that guy. Like so that's where that really came up. But it played out together really well. So I was like, okay, this is my mission. And then... So before doing Android development, yeah. right, and I was like, okay, what's more easier to break into? And then discovered, oh, web seems to be much, much easier to get started, you know, yeah. get a job, get employed. So I started learning web development. So, you know, these are the basic HTML, CSS. And then uh, I was, this is a funny story, <laughs> you know, like the job advert that I saw, I'm pretty sure I saw it on the TechZoom Facebook page. For the yeah. first company that I worked for. <laughs> so it's funny because yeah, the story is that I then come back to take some, right? <laughs> from uh, that job. From that job. <laughs> so I then go, um, I reach out to this guy. Um, his name is Trust, web development yeah. company, Comlock. You know, um, they do local uh, projects and some international projects as well. Yeah. Um, so I then reach out to him. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to apply, you know, and the requirements were to review the website. And I reviewed the website, you know, and I was like, okay, cool, um, come through, you know, uh, let's have a chat. Yeah. And then we went by Impact Hub, you know, co-working space. Yeah. I'm there, yeah. and then I met this guy, and he's like, yeah, you know, uh, he saw something in me. And yeah. he was like, you don't have all the skills, but hey, here are some Go courses for, for you to learn. You know, learn this, and you'll be able to do the job. Yeah. So that's what I started to do. You do know? you think, just to cut you off, yeah. I'm really sorry, but do you think your age plays a part in that, in that... The younger you are, the more people are willing to be like... That. Yes. So the younger you are, again, you have less responsibilities. You know, people are willing to train you because they still see you're still in that age of, you know, you're probably supposed to be in A-level or yeah. university. You're still in the mainly learning age, Phase, right? Yeah. So they see you're more likely to grasp things quickly than someone who's now set in their mindset or set in their yeah. thinking and stuff like that. 
So I think age does play a part. However, that doesn't mean if you are not old, but if you're older, yeah, you know, you, you have tend no to, you of can course, still do the same thing, <laughs> right? Um, so that's what I started to do. <clears throat> I would go there, you know, Impact Hub would meet and, yeah. you know, be learning, you know, um, taking these courses. And then eventually I was like, okay, let's get you on um, some projects, you know, uh, we're working with this company, you just have to do this little bit, and I was doing, and then the more and more and more, you know, responsibilities started to come up is, and I, looking back, that was probably the best way I could have learned. Yeah. Because if I was at home, taking online courses, there would be no, like, real world practicality. It would all be just theory, it would be like, okay, yeah. I understand how to <laughs> have, you know, a title show up on a web page, or how to put an image on a web page, but... How do I tie that to a company? This is a company comes to you and they're like, hey, we want you know people to be able to have a form that they can fill in their details and then we'll be able to contact them yeah. after we get their details. You now see the business aspect of it, how it ties in. It's not just code. Yeah. Or You're not coding in isolation. In isolation. You're actually making stuff solve, for people. Yeah, to solve someone's problem. So yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I would say... I don't like to prescribe things to people, yeah. but yeah, if you have the chance to have some sort of, you know, internship or hands-on work on when actual client projects, real world stuff. That's that's like really, really good. Like yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Um, so I did that. Um, yeah, and do not tell this. So man, <laughs> please cause correct me. So I'm not sure if what I'm gonna say is related or not. Yeah. No. No. The the question I was gonna ask is. Uh, so you've, you've worked with uh, mobile application development, you've worked with uh, web development at this stage, right? Yeah. And uh, this is around, I think, 2016, 17, 18. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I started working with you in 2018. And I remember in 2018 and even 17, before I even joined, mm -hmm. like mobile application development was hype, bro. Like it, it really was the thing right mm. uh we were doing that thing that we tend to do in africa where we look at something that works in the west and we think we can yeah. uh, implement it in similar ways so how did how did web become like the bigger thing for you uh over mobile app development right and also considering especially that i think web has more use cases within our own context of, of africa yeah, so the first thing was like what I made reference to Java Pepper, you know, like the experience of building mobile apps was frustrating for yeah. me. Maybe it's, it's probably because I just did not understand yeah. enough, right? So web was much easier for me to grasp, to understand. And the biggest factor was really the job. I had to get the first job. And it was much easier to start with web development than to say, okay, I, I have a portfolio yeah. of five, three apps or two apps or even one app that's well built, makes sense, you know, and how many companies, I knew a lot more web development companies that I could then find app, than, let's yeah. say, companies that focused on building mobile apps. app development. And that's just what I found. It doesn't mean that was the reality. That was the reality. It's just it's what, what I came across. So. <laughs> so really at the end of the day, a lot comes, you know, to chance, fate, or destiny, or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, what like you want to Like the things you see. Yeah, you know. <laughs> in, in that time. So that's how web became thing and um yeah yeah well, okay okay so it wasn't really like a conscious yeah it no really was just exposure and, and what you could see in front of you yeah it wasn't like i sat down and i was like okay pros and cons of mobile app versus web development no yeah and so you how how, how much time did you spend here before you went on to to take them uh, a year, two? August 2016 to May 2017. Yeah, yeah, I had forgotten. I read it on your blog, but mm. I, I was, yeah. So essentially, uh, nine months, nine ten months, months or whatever, ten months or something or so, yeah. like that. A year, essentially, isn't it? When you went to take them, um, you went to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, this is a funny thing, right? Because... Uh, we actually applied for the same job yeah. <laughs> in, in May 2017, as you say. Yeah. Uh, and you got the job. And then I saw an article and I'm like, what? 
<laughs> What's going no, my on? mind was like really blown. I'm like, yeah. what, this guy? Because yeah. at the time we weren't in communication, so I, I, I really weren't. didn't know like your path as a developer. So I wasn't mind blown by the fact that you were a developer mm. becoming a writer. I was mind blown because I was like, this is I know this, this is a guy. Yeah. This is just a guy like me, right? <laughs> like, so it was one of those things that's like really motivating, right? Because yeah, uh, I started knowing you around the time we were like I think ten. Yeah. So I saw that and my mind was blown. But yeah, you went to be uh, a writer. Why? <laughs> because, and I say this because I know a lot of developers, and this is not to knock developers. Yeah. But they wouldn't do that. Uh, so I'll say, the reason why I'll say that, uh, also not to knock developers, but uh, developers are kind of like uh, lawyers, right? Like, they think very highly of themselves mm -hmm. and, and their skill set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And writing, as important as it is, is almost something like teaching, right? In, in that it's like a, a really fundamental skill, a really important part of society. But it's not really like the most respected thing within yeah. society. Yeah. So why did you say yes to that? I'm, I'm really curious about that. Uh, so I'm doing this web development stuff. Yeah, it's going good. Um, and then I'm on Facebook. Again, <laughs> and then I see, uh, you know, Texam is, you know, looking for, for writers. And I was like, okay, you know, this blogging thing sounds interesting. You know, I can then have, you know, an extra thing that brings, you know, some money. You know, I'm like, okay, let me, let me okay. apply. And I applied and my plan was to do it part time. Yeah. I had no plans to leave <laughs> my development <laughs> stuff. My plan was to do it part time and went for the interview. And then, you know, Texam was like, no, no part time. Yeah. You come and you're in. And fully in. Fully in, you know. There's no gum gum kati gum gum type <laughs> of thing. And, you know, I went back to, to, to my boss, you know, and I spoke to him. So he knew I was interviewing. I told him, hey, you know, I would like, you know, to go and have this Try interview with Tex MCGG. So I then go to Trust, you know, I speak to Trust. And then, again, he saw something and he was like, this will be a really good opportunity for you. You know, take it, go. Yeah. It's fine. Try to think about that. Yeah. Someone is losing, you know, an asset in their business. They're losing someone. Yeah. And they're doing that. They're so sacrificing these person, They're essentially, doing it for yeah. that other person. Yeah. You know, and it was like, you know, go. And we are pun intended, I trusted him. <laughs> so <laughs> I, th I thought of that when I was reading on the blog, yeah. you know, and I was like, trust, you trusted. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> so I trusted him and, you know, I went and I was like, I think the also other thing is, you hear people telling you that you're young. Take the risks, exposure, do different kind of things. Yeah. You're young, you have the time. Yeah. It was not a conscious thing back then, but looking back, you know, hindsight is 2020. Yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> see those traits that really, my choices were not like super fixed to be like, okay, is this going to make enough money for me to have a wife, kids, you know, a car, whatever. Yeah, you no. were just really doing, it was just, things were happening. Vibes, it was vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just my things are happening. <laughs> so, so I went, and I was like, okay, let me try this writing yeah. thing. You know, I come in and yeah, I started doing that writing thing. However, you know, uh, Tinashe <laughs> is is he likes to tell people. I kept nettering him. It's like, dude, I wanna go to I code. I wanna go back to code because I didn't know Texam had development. You know, in my okay. in my head was news blog. You no, know, WordPress yeah. guys, the yes. type of WordPress we were talking about. <laughs> yes, and then I saw this other guy called James, and yeah. he was a developer, and I'm like, you guys, you giving me a raw deal? What's this? You know, There's space for you, me. <laughs> you have developers here. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so while I was doing that writing thing, you know, I you still felt go back. that burn inside, like I want to go back to coding. Yeah. I want to go back to coding, and you know, I kept vocalizing that, hey. I really want to go back to coding. And I was like, ah, not now. Yeah, Chimboyan, she writing. And again, Tanasha yeah. was also, wow, not right or wrong, but whatever, you know, advice he gave me, when I look back, it really helped me, you know. Yeah. Like what you're saying, being able to formulate your thoughts, you know, on a, I was going to say piece of paper, but, you know, on a screen, yeah. in an article, <laughs> it just helps your thinking. It helps you know, writing is an essential skill. Yeah. I don't do it that often. Um, yeah. But that experience, it's an thing. I I value it, even though it took me from the what coding. What you wanted to be doing. Yeah. So for that space of time, which was from May 
until October, I think October, November, somewhere there, I was full time, you yeah. know, writing, and then then switched to yeah. to coding after that. Well, yeah, it's it's crazy how things happen because now that you you say that, right? Um, it's uh, for me on a personal level, it's great that you decided to not pursue writing full time because that actually opened up what eventually would become my spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, and, and yeah. Because like you say, you moved to development in November of 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, in December of 2017, they reached out to me and they're like, yeah, you remember that thing you interviewed for and you didn't get, um, do you want it now? Are mm. you still in the country? And I'm like, yeah, man, no one wants me in the UK. They all said no to me, <laughs> so I've got nothing else to do. I might yeah. as well come and write for you. <laughs> And in 2018, I started writing. But yeah, it's, it's really weird how these things happen, like, in spite of or despite, like, how you calculate and plan. Yeah. Things always seem to also have uh, a mind of their own. But so now you're, you're developing for TechZim. What does that mean? Of course, without, like, giving away, because, you know, competitive advantage and stuff like mm. that. What does that mean on a personal level and then in terms of, of projects? Because like you said, um, for Calmlock and Trust, what you were doing is building websites and software for other people to yeah. use. Uh, TechZim is a content or media mm. startup, right? So that's a very different uh, media and e-commerce eventually, but that's yeah. a very different role. So yeah. what, what then were you like working on and what was happening there now? So initially it was, you know, these improvements to the websites, you know, so it's yeah. like, oh, okay, uh, you know, let's fix colors there, let's fix this broken style there, this button needs to be aligned. Those really, you know, cosmetic things to improve how the website looks. Yeah. Um, so that was initially. So you've got this front facing thing that readers are using and you want them to have a really good experience. Yeah. Then after that, uh, we started to get into, okay, how do we improve, you know, the website? You know, are there tools we can integrate for editors, you know? So you have, for example, there was a time when Pindula right, writes profiles about yeah. the Zimbabwean people, right? And you want to show a profile on um, the website. So, for example, someone's reading an Econet article, and yeah. then right at the bottom, you then read, you know, a little snippet about what you can yeah, is. I remember that you know? So it's like things like that <laughs> where you are, that you are now enhancing the experience of a reader. You know? So we then moved to starting to build you know, those kind of tools. And then, like what you mentioned, you know, the e-commerce stuff then yeah. came in. You know, takes the market, was then born. And then I was like, oh, okay, now we have a totally new challenge. You know, how do we get money from someone and then deliver something to yeah. them, whether it's a physical product or it's the electronic stuff like HI and CSI, you know, and that kept growing and growing and growing and growing. Yeah. And, and so the interesting thing about that is uh, you're working on all these things which are <clears throat> in many ways very foreign from each other, right? Um, as, as a developer, how are you learning these skill sets? And, and because this is not like learning within school where you go and learn and then come to practice. You're mm. essentially learning with a timeline to practice for real world. Like, yeah. how do you learn in, in those kind of settings as a developer? So it's more of learning on the job, I think. So it's like, okay, <clears throat> we want to we want to have a website yeah. that people can come to and buy stuff. That's the first, that's the like big outline. And then you start looking at, okay, what's a website? that, you know, sell stuff. Oh, e-commerce. E okay, what's this e-commerce thing? E-commerce yeah. plus WordPress. You, a lot of typing and Googling, <laughs> you know? So you're really spending a lot of time Googling, reading, finding out things. Okay, e-commerce plus WordPress leads you to WooCommerce. Oh, WooCommerce is a plugin developed by someone else. Yeah. You install it on a WordPress site, boom. You know, you can start selling stuff. Oh no, yeah. how do I get payments? Okay, there's EcoCash. Okay, does EcoCash have online payments? Oh, it seems so. You know, there are these other companies that we know that somehow you come to them, you can pay, and then they'll deliver something to you, yeah. right? And then that's another thing. Oh, okay, what's an API? So it's really driven by the business um, requirements yeah, or logic. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Everything seems to be answering a question essentially mm -hmm. you're not learning for the sake of learning yes you're not you're solving problems i, I think exactly so you're not learning to say ah, i just want to learn javascript it's no it's oh okay 
for us to have you know something on the website that's interactive maybe we need javascript and then mm. you learn javascript oh. and in learning javascript yeah sure, you're probably learning very specific things that will solve your problem that you're trying to solve yeah. you're not just learning for the Broadly. sake of learning which can also be a downside because you can then now have this really tunnel like skill set yeah. or vision where you just know this specific use case of javascript yeah. but then if you look to the left or to the right a bit you can then see yeah. oh there's more that you can do with you know javascript or php or whatever yeah. um trying to balance that you know how do i yeah. <laughs> how do <laughs> i keep cold, growing it? my skills to be broader but at the how same time i'm working only, and i have to I deliver this thing yeah, yeah. And, and so that's one of the things uh, you were talking about uh, with my brother when I ran away from this room. <laughs> you were talking about uh, achieving a, a work-life balance and how difficult uh, that's been. And, and I think this is, this is a very odd thing because uh, I've seen you struggle with this uh, during our time at TechZim. Mm -hmm. You've seen me struggle with this during our time at, at TechZim. It generally feels right now like a... I don't know. I don't know how to put it. It feels like there's, you're always overwhelmed. There's always something else to do. And there's always that pressure. There's always that uh, nagging feeling that you're not maybe dedicating enough time to, to family or maybe you're over-dedicating to work. All these funny internal dilemmas you're having. How, how has that been? Because I haven't worked with you in a while now. Um, yeah. How has that been since you, you moved to Human Made? And how... What's your, what's your approach to it now, the, the work-life balance? Yeah, so just to you know, make something clear, the work-life yeah. balance didn't come as a move from TechZam. Yeah, right? that's why it's I, I, something I tried to say it. <laughs> that, was, that was already talking yeah. you know, to Tinash about. I'm like, hey, I feel like I don't have a handle. Naturally, I'm just a workaholic. Yeah. So it's not as a consequence of, oh, okay, takes them such a bad place to know. Yeah. It's really, you know, oh, I... Oh, yeah, yeah, someone could listen to this and it, interpret yeah, it. Yeah, so as, that's as, what I was trying to yeah, clarify yeah, that. That's, like, that's very good context, it, exactly. It's not because of the move. Yeah. It's just my own nature that, one, I enjoyed coding, and, you know, I was at home, I don't have responsibilities, I can do this day in, day out, morning yeah. to evening. And, and as far as I knew, at that time, you weren't really, like, the most outgoing person. Exactly, either. you know, introvert, you stay in, you know, all of this, you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have anything, you yeah. know, you're really just about your Work. code and your laptop. <laughs> but then, I think some of those things are consequence of growing up. You know, you start to see it's important, you know, to talk to people, you know, yeah. it's important to you know, spend time with your family, your father, your mother, or whatever, or your yeah. cousin, or your friends, you know, if you want to pursue romantic relationships, you know, it's important for you to dedicate those times, you know, in your life. So I started to see that, you know, and, you know, started to become a conversation in my life, like, okay, how do I say, no, this is enough, no, this is enough, you know, and now I've got a really good handle on it, and it's like, I come in, People say don't clock your hours, but sometimes you need to do yeah, that. Sometimes you, you, sometimes you need, need to, to do. say, I start, so I start at seven and I finish at three o'clock, yeah. you know, with a one hour lunch break in between. If I don't yeah. do lunch, I finish at two o'clock. Yeah. And I know I come, I do my best in that window. And if my best is not enough for that day, it, it is what it is. We yeah. then have to start to analyze, okay, Why? what's happening? Why you know? can't I achieve the things I said? The answer should not be go from seven to seven. To seven. Yeah. You know, the answer should be, what's, <laughs> how do you make sure you keep being high-performant in, in that in same that time, number that of hours, you know? It so it's really being that strict. And it also forces you to then also, you know, analyze your own working patterns. Like, okay, do I get distracted a lot? Do I open Twitter too much? Yeah. You know, do I need to put, yeah. do not disturb, put my phone away or something, you know? You, because you, you now... I'm also a guilty person. Like, I get really guilty. Yeah, you do. <laughs> like, I'm like... you know. <laughs> yeah. I you know what you've not done. But I spent, like, you know, 30 minutes, one hour, and Jingo School or you Instagram, yeah, and then yeah. at the end of the yeah. day, you feel like it did nothing. Yeah. I yeah, don't like true. that feeling. That's true. So it forces me to then figure out, okay, am I being really productive? Am I getting the things that I need to get done? Am I yeah. getting stuck? Do I just not know enough? You know, are my skills lacking? Do I need to reach out, you know, to the company and say, hey, I need to learn, you know, this particular skill, which is a thing, you know, you can yeah. go. I know, I remember back, you know, it takes them, you know, you could be like, hey, I don't know this. 
and I can't make any progress yeah. in building this. I you need start. to first just understand this thing on its own yeah. before I start trying to apply it. Yeah. You know, um, so it's really those hard stops in my life. So like Friday, can I so far so far Weekend, unless can I put on like yeah, there's there a real emergency, where, exactly. you have to exactly. put in extra time, or you have to come in during the there's weekend. There's a fire that's burning, yeah. But that shouldn't but it, be it the shouldn't norm. Become, you know, it shouldn't yeah. be the norm. It should be like, yeah, once in a or while. Or at least yeah. if it is the norm, it's the norm that you've signed into, like you're doing it willingly. Which is also yeah. another thing, you know, Kuti. If you decide to start your own startup, right, and you're building a business, <laughs> you like you can't then. It's it's that whole thing that. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Peterson says, you know, yeah. existence is suffering. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's like there you need to choose your degree. damn suffering. <laughs> you know, either way you're going to suffer. It's just are you gonna suffer in the thing that you, that you like or that you or it's choose gonna be imposed on you. or that you can justify <laughs> in the end to be like, okay, that suffering was worth was it. Worth it. Yeah. Right. So coming back to the startup thing, you decide to start a startup. Yeah. If your business isn't doing well and you're putting in two hours every day, it's like ah man, maybe put maybe in more time. You can do more. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, I think that's definitely something uh I've come to see when it comes to <laughs> untold is that um there are a lot of like <clears throat> realities within the context of building a media business that are like very harsh, right? Yeah. Uh but I know that going in. <laughs> and I go in by choice, you know, like whether we win or we lose, it's mm. like a conscious choice to say there are these things that we're trying to there are these narratives that we're trying to shift. Uh, it may be a bit of a thankless job, but we are doing it because we want to do it, not because we're like forced to do it. So yeah, I, I think I do get, I get some of that. But yeah, work-life balance is a, is a funny one. It's a, it's a tricky one. Um, yeah. I think it's an evolving thing. that you, I was about to say that. And you, you can have phases in your life. You can have a phase where <laughs> you're like, ah, yeah, you know, pretty chill. I don't do anything on weekends. Then you can have a phase, you're like, I want to start a side hustle. I want to yeah. build the side thing. And my weekends are going 90% to that. to that and maybe 10% to other things. So, And that's fine as well. No? And <laughs> this whole thing of you need to decide on your own. Don't let someone tell you that working on weekends is bad. Exactly. You know, exactly. If you yeah. decide it's good for you, do it. Maybe it's what keeps you, you know, sane, sane. or something. <laughs> you know, do true, you, true, it's your true. life, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's for better or for life. worse, you know, yeah. make the choices. Fail on your own terms if you have to. Yeah, I, I largely um, agree with that. And then one of the things uh, you do now, uh, as you alluded to earlier on, is you work remotely, you work with other teams and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, being that I, I worked with you uh, at TechZim and during that time, we worked together remotely for two years. Mm. I know that you already had um, experience working remotely, right? Um, so what's that like? And then more in line with human made, what's the, what's the difference you've seen between uh, working remotely uh, for a local tech startup, right, and then working remotely for a global tech startup? I think the biggest thing that came to mind is communication style. So because you're local, you align most of the times. So yeah. even though you might leave a message, um, not expecting someone to respond immediately, they usually tend to respond yeah. immediately because you're in the same time zone. You're all working. Yeah, you're all working. But now when people work different times, different time zones, you know, you might send a message and you can get a response three hours later because maybe they'd start, yeah. you know, a couple of hours later than you do, you know. So really getting to see that difference in preferences of working style and understanding that communication does not have to be, you know, in sync. It can be a sync. You can send something and you can get a response later. It's okay. It's fine. Um, sometimes you can then try to, you know, schedule to be like, okay, can we have a call you know, around this time so that we really have that real-time right. communication. Yeah, um, so I think communication is the big thing. Um, the other one is really about the size of the organization. Yeah. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of communication, <laughs> again, simply because the organization is much larger. Yeah. Um, and that's also another thing that I'm just looking at. I'm like, okay, 
the way you know comms are structured you know there are different ways you know there's a place where you can read posts that people are posting you know there's slack where there are real-time messages and then you can have zoom calls and then yeah. there's this this and seeing that whereas locally it was mostly either in just a whatsapp group uh, or you know base camp or slack or one of those tools right yeah um uh, but it was one or the other um and then the zoom calls uh, when you need to do them um but the biggest thing is the sync uh, communication yeah i think that's the biggest um the others are not really about location like the difference they are about the size as well yeah. you know working in a larger team you know um having a lead developer or a principal engineer you know people are really highly skilled yeah. and you're working on the same project um versus you know smaller organization um and you know you're probably a handful of developers one or two and it's between the two of you or you know for a couple of years it was just me yeah. you know and it's like everything is on you you yeah. know <laughs> um yeah yeah that's interesting that's interesting those those are really the 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 biggest things i i i really wanted to to catch up with you on and mm. it's great to like have the conversation like this where cuz you know whatsapp sometimes everyone is is drowning with things outside of whatsapp <laughs> that's the funny thing i used to you know be like how does a person you know take a long time to reply yeah. like you said my message and then i see you online and i'm like <laughs> you've not replied to my message what's going on yeah now sadly i've become that person you become that person and i understand mm-hmm. you know it's really also that a sync thing it's like if you're sending me a whatsapp message it's probably not urgent otherwise yeah. you would have called yeah. because you have my number you can just call me and be like far i need an answer right now right so you then get to understand that like oh, okay there's a whole lot more to life than whatsapp mm-hmm. groups um or replying to people on whatsapp or chatting you can um, always tell them how you're doing four hours from now exactly <laughs> the world will, <laughs> what will not come crumbling down what end? um <laughs> so i understand people within publicly say that and they're like hey don't just say hi to me or mm. don't just send a whatsapp i'm like hi if you need something tell me everything yeah. in the first message let me understand or call me or you yeah. know if there's a better channel maybe email is where they're most responsive because i know that you know a noise so to speak of whatsapp like yeah. maybe sometimes whatsapp just has chatter just open it because, right yeah. there's so much chatter so it might be like yeah choose the best part to communicate <laughs> but it's a really interesting thing some of the things you like didn't understand as a child that you saw your parents yeah. doing and then now you're older and you're like okay yeah you know again <laughs> i read some something on twitter like and see i now understand why fathers when they come back home you know they drive their car they park and they just chill Wait, in the silent. car i saw my dad do that <laughs> you know going you just come and the one way you have to get into yeah. the garage and be like Oh yeah. like are you coming out what's going on <laughs> <What's up> with <laughs> you <laughs> right yeah. you didn't understand like sometimes you just had That's a heavy day is, is, is. and you just want to chill by yourself and just be like okay yeah it's funny that you say that because nowadays it's a it's a new thing i've started to do <laughs> i think in the past month or two where sometimes i get in the car i'm driving and there's no music at all I just want the silence. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, totally. It's a very odd thing yeah. like how much more I appreciate silence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm around kids and I'm like, "Yo, you guys are, you have like a lot of energy. I envy you." <laughs> it's, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, but yeah, it's also that growing up things we were essentially 25 now. So, that's in it's an interesting place to be mm-hmm. because growing up I think we were part of the generation that was told that by 25 we should have houses. The fanange dane, you know, kaden, kachao, ka nice, you know, maybe a kid now, you know all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, interesting how it's not played out exactly like that, but I mean, And that's okay. fine as well. That's you really know. fine. So I don't think uh I am not in crisis. I will speak for myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope you're not either. No. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was interesting catching up with you, man.